Hey guys, um, last night I, when I went to bed, I had a um, pretty clear dream and I know it meant something because it's exactly the kind of stuff I've been studying. I've been really putting a lot of time and hours into what's behind Hollywood, what we watch, what we listen to, our music, and surprisingly enough, Christian music. Um, what do we entertain ourselves with? And so I've been putting a lot of time into studying the Bible and what it says, but I really feel like in the last days when it's talking about um, just a great deception that's going to happen, I thought, oh, it must be some of this occultic stuff that's sneaking into churches like New Age and stuff. No, I think it's so much bigger and we've already been a part of it for a while. And that's occultic stuff in what we watch, our media, stars that we admire, music, music that we listen to. Um... It's all over and it's saturated, completely and totally saturated. And as much as I am careful what comes into our house, you know, I have 13 kids. I don't always know what people are watching. I do have filters on everything, but stuff gets through. There's no filters for occultic stuff on Netflix. None of that. I have to manly, manually go through and block shows that have any form of witchcraft or um, occultic stuff in it, even if it looks really, really innocent, like, you know, ducktails showing seances or like ducktails. Come on. So it's in cartoons. It's everywhere. That's the great deception. It's like it, we were frogged. We were us Christians. It just happened so slowly. We were just putting warm water and before you know it, we're being boiled alive. We don't even realize what we've allowed into our house. So I've been really, um, just telling God, I'm, I'm sorry. And I'm, I'm, I don't want to live like this. I don't want to just be okay with stuff like that. So I went to bed last night and I had this dream. And in my dream, I, um, it's like we were all on a ledge and everybody, uh, were standing on a ledge and it represented like just, just life. And then right at the edge of that ledge, there was a lion. This lion was literally going back and forth and it was just looking for its victim. Um, and every now and then, he would get somebody, and he would gut them and completely tear them to pieces right in front of me. And I could, I remember it was so clear. It was like a vision. And people that I really looked up to and I respected, they were caught too. They let down their guard and they were caught. And it's like we were all on this ledges and I was busy looking out for my kids and what are my kids doing and, um, how you know, are we being safe? And I kept being real busy looking out for my kids. And then eventually I thought, you know, it's pretty safe. And every now and then the lion would, lion would catch somebody and gut them and kill them. And it was really heartbreaking and sad. But I was mostly worried looking around for my family and me. But there was one point where I really let down my guard. And I even started to daydream a little bit. Like, eh, nothing's happened for a little bit. And I turned my face to the side like this. And I started to daydream a little bit. And while my face was turned to the side, and I was really relaxed, had no worries, I felt this hot breath. I could feel it in my dream. It didn't matter if it was a dream. I felt this really big, hot breath the size of a lion's face. And I thought, uh-oh. I knew exactly what that was. I slowly turned back and I looked. And the lion was right in front of my face. And he was just ready to get me. I knew it was too late. And he grabbed me. And I woke up. And I started shaking violently in my bed. I knew exactly. And you know what I heard? It was immediate. I didn't hear the whole scripture, but this is what I heard. The devil walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. I knew a scripture that was. Of course, when I woke up, scripture, 1 Peter 5, 8 says, Be sober-minded, be alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And that's exactly what my dream was to a T. It was all my dream was about. Is just, yeah, we can, I'm pretty much vigilant, always watching out for my kids. I do take notice of what my kids are listening to, what they're watching, and filters on things. But there's been times where I've gotten really relaxed. And what were my kids exposed to? You know, what did I allow in my house? And that's exactly what the devil do, does, is he just walks around, he looks for his next victim. It doesn't matter how amazing you think you are, or how long you've been saved, it doesn't matter. He's looking for his next victim, and that's exactly what I let it become, and I repented. It was about, you know, 5 o'clock in the morning, and I was shaking so violently in my bed, 
and I cried and I asked God to forgive me. I said, I'm sorry. You've gifted me these children, this family, and I haven't been careful for what I've allowed in the house. And I repented and I woke up. I made some changes around the house. It doesn't make the kids happy all the time. They might get upset with me. But, you know, I answer to God. And someday I'm going to stand before God and I'm going to be held accountable for these 13 kids. I want to be my kids' as friends, but I'm their parent first. So I thought I would just share because it was an amazing dream and it really, it really spoke a lot to me.